Today I'm going to talk about the narcissist and the empath, or pigs and pearls. Hi, I'm Nanette. Welcome back to my channel, Narcissism Exposed. And if you haven't already subscribed, do hit the subscribe button and be sure to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. So before I begin, I want to mention that every narcissist has three stages of their life. The first stage, and I call it a stage because <clears throat> on a theatrical stage you're performing, right? You're putting uh, forth uh, something, a narrative that you've predetermined, pre-studied. So it's not really based on real life happenings. So the first stage that um, the narcissist engages in is, is their public stage. So what do I mean by that? Let's say at work, they're uh, an executive or high-end um, uh, chief in their business, their company, their field of, uh, of expertise. And in that persona or the public persona, right, um, they're going to exude all these great qualities and they're such good people and they do good services and they volunteer and they uh, provide funding for different things and they're um, accoladed and praised for everything that they do and they never show uh, any dark side to them. And the reason is because this is the persona they must, must, must maintain. They absolutely guard this aspect of their life like nothing else. Then comes the private stage, the performance on the private stage, and that is where the interpersonal close relationship exists. Let's say with a partner, being engaged to someone, married to somebody, or even on the other levels like a mother and child or siblings. Uh, this, this is where things get really hairy and sticky because these interrelationship, close interrelationship um, partnerships and interactions or engagements, or I like to call them entanglements, is where you get to see the dark and dirty narcissist. Again, he'll never or she'll never show that in public. Everything is perfect and beautiful and good. Especially, you'll see lots of these pictures on Facebook and Instagram and, and look at the amazing life the narcissist has and look at this, everybody loves them and praises them, right? And then, so you have the public, you have the private, then you have the secret life of the narcissist. Oh yeah, the narcissist never lays out his or her cards on the, t all their cards on the table. No, there's that secret, dark, evil existence that they have where they're plotting, scheming, and uh, manipulating under the radar. And those three personas I'll cover in depth in another video. But today, getting back to pigs and pearls, narcissist and empath. So the narcissist, as we know, craves like crazy to control, to manipulate. They think they're smarter than anyone else. They think they're above everyone else and they walk around with such arrogance and such self uh, praise and adulation and they want everyone around them to also praise, uh, praise them and provide adulation to them. So in this whole attempt to control and manipulate, the empath in that second stage that I talked about, the private life of the narcissist with his partner. Okay, we're going to talk about interpersonal relationship with um, with a partner, spouse, somebody you're engaged to, somebody you live with, right? So here's where things get really sticky and dirty because they want to always be winning and on top. 
And as a side note, they're never winning. So we, are, we already know the corrupt life of a narcissist is never winning. But what they will do to you, they will never do in their public life. No, they will never show their fangs, right? They will never show the uh, belittling and the devaluing and causing you pain and suffering and ghosting, gaslighting you. These are things they reserve for their partner. Isn't that special? Not. So in this world, this, this private world with the narc and the empath, the empath, you, me, we are trying to, we have this circle around us. And this circle, within that circle, we try to maintain a reality world, a reality tunnel, a circle of, uh, where we have boundaries, we have values, we have morals, we want to walk in love and kindness and understanding, appreciation, forgiveness. These are all empathetic things that, characteristics that we try to maintain and hold on to. And when you try to discuss these values and attempt to resolve issues with a narcissist, they won't have anything to do with it they will fight you to the death. They will just knock you down and tell you you don't know what you're talking about. And they will really work you over. And you will be trying so hard and um, exerting so much energy and so much of your heart and life. You are actually coming out of this exhausted, feeling defeated, feeling like, you know, what is this chaos? What's this confusion? Because it doesn't make sense to your mind. Your mind, you're used to, to being around people that other empaths, where you work things out and you show forgiveness, you show understanding, you have healthy communication and you resolve things, you work things out um, towards the goal of resolution and you're trying to implement this type of interaction with a narcissist and it is just not going to happen. And you'll see this repeatedly. They only have a black and white reality tunnel. They're right and you're wrong. And if you resist, if you push against what they want or, or expect of you, then the black reality comes where they, they exert that punishment and suffering on you. There, there is no coming to terms, no mutual um, uh, understanding, no reciprocity of any type. So you see what you are up against. You will never see or hear the narcissist say, hey, hey honey, hey sweetheart, hey babe, I'm so sorry for how I acted. That was really inconsiderate of me. I really judged you uh, wrongly and I'm sorry. And wow, what I did was really selfish and unkind. Would you forgive me? Or, or wow, you know what? I should have listened more to what you were trying to communicate to me. These would be lovely interactions, right? With another human being that you love and have feelings for and you, you expect or think the narcissist has love and feelings for you. But it's all a facade. It's a fake reality. What is actually happening is they are doing their very best to orchestrate your response by control, pressure, manipulation, uh, pushing you into a corner to where you finally, because you're so tired and defeated, you give in and you, you can't even uphold your boundaries anymore. It's just too much of a fight. It's just too dirty and, 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 and uh, just awful and against your nature. It's against your very nature because you don't have the dark demonic nature of the narcissist. And what's going on behind the back end there, many times you're not even, even understanding why is this all happening? Why does this always happen continuously in this loop 
that the narcissist keeps you in. And this is where the pigs and the pearls come in. According to Holy Scripture, there's a wonderful enlightening verse in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. And I'm going to read that to you. Do not throw your pearls before pigs or they will trample them under their feet. And if that's not enough, trampling your pearls under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Doesn't that feel what it's like after an argument with a narcissist, after an episode, after an event with a narcissist who is just plugging it to you, just, you know, forking you, with you just picking at you. And at the end, you feel like you've been trampled on and you feel like they've just torn you to pieces. That's because, and the correlation is, a pig loves to wallow in the mud and mire and the dirt. And if you, the empath with your beautiful pearls, your beautiful heart, you try to present that to, to a creature that would never value what you have, those wonderful aspects and characteristics of your heart, your morals, your life, your goodness, that's going to get trampled on. That is what happens with every argument or discussion, if you will, where it always ends where the narcissist is either scolding you, yelling at you, uh, storming out and ghosting you. It, it, you just feel so defeated because this is a, a, a battle that's never going to be won by you. It never will because the pig will always be the pig. Now, I love pigs, you know, they're really cute and everything, but you get the analogy of the pig. They're, they're all wallowing and so on, and, and you don't give them pearls. They would never, ever know what to do with it. They only know the one, their one world, and they want to drag you your, your circle of value, core values and morals, they want to drag you. They're trying desperately to drag you into their pig pen. That's what, and they want to wrestle with you because that's their realm. That Their realm is dirty, secretive, uh, corrupt, and they're only too happy and gleeful even to see you get all exhausted, wallowing in that mud with them, trying to wrestle with them, because that's not your realm. That's not how you roll. That's not how you live. And it's exhausting to try to uh, be entangled with a narcissist and, and the things that they do to you to break you down continuously. So how do you win with a narc? so that your pearls don't get trampled on by the pig, the narcissist. The answer is really, really simple. Don't get into the pen with the narcissist. Don't do it. Knowing that that battle will never be won, it, it just can't be. Their reality won't allow it. Their sick, demonic reality won't allow it. And here's a, a humorous quote from George Bernard Shaw, and he says, Never wrestle with a pig. You will both get dirty, and the pig will like it. That's the narcissist. They love it. Whether they're, you're giving them adoration and adulation, or you're fighting with them, and you're arguing, and you're trying to drive home your point, they are so gleeful. They are reactionary hogs. Any reaction that they can get from you, they love it. That's what they thrive on. So don't get into the pen with them. And another really awesome verse in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, verse 33 that I want to share with you. And it says, be not deceived evil or bad company corrupts or ruins good morals. Your good character 
I know we th we say, you know, but I can help that person. I, I can really, you know, enlighten them and help them out. You know, they had a bad background, a bad uh, upbringing, a bad marriage, a bad former relationship. You must see this for what this is, for what the true reality is. And if you've tried repeatedly to help the narcissist, that you ha you're going to have to come to a point in a place in your life where you realize you are in nothing but a loop with the narcissist and things don't get resolved, his or her bad behavior does not change, that you still find them cheating and stealing from you, you still find them uh, doing secret things behind your back. You're an empath, you've got pearls. Go find somebody that is also empathetic and also has good morals and uh, good insight, a good heart that has values and morals like you. And I understand that you've given your heart to this person. I get it. I, I've been through three of these relationships, so I know it just tears and rips your heart out. But you have to love yourself bigger and greater than the love you have for the relationship. I understand that. You, you have to see it. You engage the logical side of your brain, see it also spiritually from the verses that I've shared with you and understand that this is, this is greater than, the, than what you're seeing five senses. It, it's bigger. There's so much going on in the back end of things. And Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, it says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That wrestling is on a spiritual realm. The narcissist is engaging in dark spiritual existence and is driven by evil. And that, that evil is the ultimate evil that they want to exert on you is destruction, total destruction. And so I want to admonish you, I want to encourage you to go over the verses in this video and see the greater reality of what's really going on so that you can uh, escape this loop, this spider web, um, and get on your path of healing and rebuilding yourself. So that's what I'm encouraging you to do. And write down your comments. Let me know how you escaped the pig pen. Let me know what your strategy was. If you have verses that would be fantastic to share with the community. And if you have any prayers that you ha want us to be praying for, write those down in the comments. Know that I'm praying for you. And I appreciate your prayers for me as well. And until next time, Walk in peace and stay blessed.